Total air temperature comes up in this exam quite often as in-flight data. In the exam, they could either give you forecast temperature, outside air temperature, or total air temperature, which is read from the temperature gauge in the aircraft. Total air temperature is static air temperature plus the temperature rise associated with high-speed flight. Something important to remember as well is static air temperature is the same as outside air temperature. So don't be surprised if you see static air temperature read in instead of outside air temperature sometimes. The temperature increase we talked about associated with high-speed flight is called ram rise, and it's a result of heating of the air due to compression. From a practical standpoint, TAT is the temperature of the airplane's skin, while SAT or OAT is the free air's temperature. Total air temperature is always greater than SAT due to the ram rise in temperature that occurs because of this dynamic heating. Ram air temperature rise is also proportional to the speed of the aircraft. The faster you go, the more heating you'll get. Ram rise could just be a few degrees increase in temperature or significantly more. For the 727 flying at Mark 0.8 for example, it generally result in a temperature rise of about 30 degrees. This rise in temperature may be enough to prevent ice from forming in some cases. If we now turn to page 3-106 of the Boeing 727 handbook, we have a table of the TAT values of various Mark numbers and flight levels. Let's have a look at an example. We'll go to flight level 330. The zero indicated mark temperature here of minus 50 degrees is the static air temperature or outside air temperature. That is, it's the actual temperature of the air without any ram rise. If we come across and we fly at mark 0.79 and icing conditions existed, we expect the TAT gauge to read minus 23 degrees. Because we know what the temperature is on an icer day, we can easily determine the icer deviation when it's something other than minus 23 degrees. So looking at flow level 330 at mark 0.79, if instead of reading minus 23 degrees, it actually read minus 20 degrees, we'd know we're three degrees warmer than ISA. So the ISA deviation today would be ISA plus three. Using this ISA deviation, we can also adjust the outside temperature if need be. Let's do the first example in the textbook together and you can try the rest from there. Moving from left to right in the question, we're flying at flight level 280 at mark 0.79 and the tack gauge is indicating minus 22 degrees. Moving across on the table, you can see on an ISA day, we'd expect to see minus 12 degrees, but instead we're showing minus 22 degrees from the question. This means we're 10 degrees colder than ISA. On an ISA day, the outside air temperature is minus 40 degrees, so with an ISA deviation of minus 10, we now expect the outside air temperature to be minus 50. Try a few of these questions. Once you're happy with it, try using the ISA deviation you've calculated to work at a true airspeed in the table below the exercise on the same page.